Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path. Last week I showed you how to make a beaded toggle and I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you had fun with that project and I hope you learned something because this week we're going to make a bracelet where we're actually be attaching the toggle that we made. Um, it's a really cool project so I hope that you'll enjoy it. So the first thing that you're going to need is a beaded toggle. Now you can use a regular clasp, a regular toggle, whatever you want, but I really like this clasp with this bracelet because it really allows you to customize it. So that's a really, really great thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. Oh. So this is the bracelet that we are going to be making today. I call it the magic carpet bracelet <laughs> um, because it reminds me of shaggy carpet for some reason. I just love it. Here's another version of it. This is turquoise um, with a white opal um, color frame. And this was the emerald green with bunches of different colors of crystals. I've used 16 different colors in that one. But as you can see, the toggles exactly match the bracelet. So it works out really, really well. To do the project, you're going to need 22 grams of a size 6 seed bead. Now that's a full, almost a full tube. Um, for the turquoise colored one, this was all I had left right here in the tube. So you're going to need almost a full tube of a size 6 seed bead. That's going to be the base, okay? So like for this one, I've used the Silver Line Emerald. And for this one, I've used a turquoise. The one I'm going to do today, I'm using a beige or an ivory colored 6-0 for my base. The next thing you're going to need is you are going to need a size 11 seed bead. Now, you are going to see a lot of this color. Okay, so the turquoise one, this is all the turquoise you see on top. So you're going to see a lot of it. Same thing for here. I used a silver line emerald, so you see a lot of that color. For the one I'm going to do today, I'm using a bronze because I'm going to do a green, I like a green version. Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm doing a brown version. There we go. Got it now. Um, you are also going to need crystals. Now, if you don't want to use crystals, you can use a fire polish bead or a pearl or whatever you want. But to me, this looks really great with the crystals. It takes about 160. Now, this is just the way that I'm doing it. The cool thing about this bracelet is you have creative control. So you can add a lot of beads to seed bead loops. Or you can do, you know, like I do one loop with no crystal, one loop with a crystal. And I just kind of repeat that all the way down. But you'll see as we go through on that one. Um, on the multicolored one. I used 160 crystals, but I used 10 of each color. So that'll kind of give you an idea on that one. Today, I'm going to be using four different colors. All pretty brown. I'm using a copper. I'm going to be using a medium smoked topaz AB a magic gold and a topaz AB um, and I think that's going to look really awesome with my bronze and my creamy color. Um, besides that you'll need a needle and lots and lots of fire line. If you actually purchase a kit, we're going to have kits for all three of the ones that I'm showing you today. Um, <clears throat> the kits will actually come with a roll of, 15, uh, roll of fire line that has 15 yards on it. So, um, and it'll pretty much take the whole roll for the bracelet. It takes a lot. Now, you can use, if you wanted to, you could use the um, Nozu Sunoco thread. And you could actually make this more into a bangle style bracelet without a clasp. Um, and that would just be connecting the two ends together. You could also use your Nymo, pretty much any kind of thread that you have for this bracelet. It is a little bit heavy, okay, so it's not very dainty and lightweight, so just be aware of that. I'm going to start with my needle on three yards of thread. Now, you can start with however much you want, but like I said, you're going to be using up there towards the 15-yard mark by the time you actually get your toggle done. So, um, just start out with what you can because you will have to add thread. So, go ahead and get your table set up and your mat set up and we'll get started. As you can see, I've gone ahead and poured out my whole tube of beads. The first thing I'm going to be doing 
is I'm going to thread on one six zero, and I'm going to bring it to the end of my thread. Now, I want to leave about six to eight inches for my tail. And then I'm going to go right back up through that same bead once again so that the thread will loop around this bead and this will be my stop bead. Now this will be also be bead number one on my row. I'm going to pick up five more. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now let me scoot these out of the way here. <clears throat> So we have six total 60 seed beads. Now we're going to be learning square stitch. You could also do this on a loom if you wanted to for the base, but it's just as quick and just as easy to do it with what's called square stitch. So we're going to start out with one bead and I'm going to um, come back through bead number six. Okay, let's see the best way to hold this to show you here. Okay, so I'm going to come back through bead number six, which is the last bead actually on the row, and I'm going to pull the thread. And when you pull it, your bead you just added is going to sit right on top of the bead you just went through. Now I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go through the first bead here on the new row. And I'm going to hold those beads in place and pull the thread. Now I'm going to pick up one bead. This time I'm going to come back through beads five and six. So I'm coming through two beads this time, five and six. And when I pull, I can pull without making a hot mess here. There we go. Now you see that the new bead sits on top of the bead I just went through. So I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to go through the two beads that are on this second row. Pick up one bead. I'm going to go back through beads four and five of the first row. So beads four and five. And this time I'm going to go through the bead right above where my thread is coming out and then the one I just added. I'm going to hold that and pull that through. Pick up one bead. This time I'm going to come back through beads three and four on row one. Pull it all the way through. And now I'll go through the next two beads here on the top, which is going to be row two. Oh my goodness, I've got too much thread and too many different little wires hanging down and oh goodness. Okay, pick up one bead. This time we're going to go through beads two and three on row one. Pull this through and then we'll go through the next two beads at the top. You can see I'm holding these beads in place as I do it, and that just keeps it tighter. So I've got one more bead. I'm going to go through beads one and two of the first row. And then through the end two beads here. So that completes row one and two of the base, which is square stitch. Now row three, we're going to work exactly the same. When you start your rows, you're only picking up one bead and going through one bead. So I'm picking up one bead and I'm going to go back through bead number one of row two. Now 
And see how our knee bead sits right there on top. So we're going to come through it and hold it in place and pull that thread. Now pick up one bead. This time we're going to go through beads two and one of row two. Pull that through. And then we'll go through the two beads that we have now on the top of row three. Pick up one bead. I'm going to go back through beads three and two of row two and pull that through. And then we go through the top two beads on the next row. I'm doing this slow so that you guys can see. Once you understand the stitch, it's going to go a lot faster and you're going to feel really confident with it. Anything that you can do on a loom, you can also do exactly like what I'm showing you right here with the square stitch. So pick up one. Now we're going through five and four on row two. Go through the next two beads here. And then our last one for the row is we're picking up one. We're going through beads six and five. And then going through the top two beads here on row three. So you're just going to continue in square stitch until you reach the desired length. For a 7 inch bracelet, it takes about 41 rows because you have to make sure that you leave an inch to add your clasp because it's going to take up, as you can see, about that full inch. So go ahead and continue with the base until you get it to your so desired right now, length. I have about 3 and a quarter inches of the bracelet done and this took up 3 yards of thread. So I want to show you how to end your thread and add new thread. So for me, what I'm going to do is I ne you need to pay attention to which side you're coming out. So I'm coming out towards the right. And all I'm going to do is take what the thread I have left and I'm going to run it through the row below me, below where I'm exiting, I should say. And I'm going to do one little half hitch knot. So I'm going to go under the thread, leave myself a little loop, stick the needle through the loop and pull. And then weave through the next row and put one little knot and then weave through the next row and then if you have enough thread you can weave through one more row and then tie this I'm sorry cut this piece off And then thread you a new piece of thread onto so your needle. So I have my new thread added on my needle. And I'm going to come back about four rows. Because I know I need to come out to the right side. So I'm going to come back about four rows. And I'm going to stick my needle through that fourth row. And I'm going to pull it through. Not all the way. There we go. And I'm going to leave myself enough that I can kind of hang on to. And then I'm going to stitch through the third row. Again, make sure you hold that. Your second row. And then your first row here where you would have ended. And as you can see, I'm coming out of the same side. Now, I'm going to hold this for just a minute here before, until I get started. So I'm going to pick up and start the same way. Pick up one bead. Go through. You're just working the row just like you normally would. And then pick up a bead and go through your two. 
And once you've added about three beads on here, you've totally got the thread locked into place and you can trim that little tail. But I would probably get a row put on and get it locked into place before you actually trim that tail. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and you could tie that thread on um, or tie it off however you want to. But what you really need to do is you need to make sure, um, you know, that it's not necessary for the knot. So you'll be okay if you do it just like I'm showing you here. And you're just going to continue adding your thread and your beads until you get your desired length. Once you've got your bracelet base completed, then you're ready to start the embellishments. Now, no matter if you're coming out of this left side or the right side, you still have to do this next step to make it work right. I'm coming out of the right side, so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through the row right below the one that I just finished. Go completely through it. And then catch everything on the table as you do because that's the best way to do it. Then <clears throat> take your needle and come back through five of the beads that you added on the last row. So you're not going through that sixth bead. From where I'm coming out, I'm going to start my embellishments. Now this is where I told you you have total creative control. I'm going to start out, I'm going to put on four 11s, a four millimeter, and four 11s. I'm going to come back through the sixth bead on the row, which is this end one, and the fifth bead. So I'm going through two beads. So when I pull it, that first embellishment is going to lay right on the sixth bead. Now for the next embellishment, I'm going to pick up eight seed beads. So I have my eight. I'm going to come back through bead number five and bead number four. So five, which is the one I was coming out of, and then four, which is the next bead on the row. So now that gives me an embellishment with a crystal and an embellishment without a crystal. Now I'll do one with. So it's four 11s, a four millimeter, and four 11s. I'm going to come out of the bead, come back through the bead I'm coming out of, which is bead number four, and I'm going to go through four and three. Now, just on this one row, I'm going to go ahead and add my closure, the first part of my closure, since I'm to the end, to the blah, 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 where I'm supposed to be. Gosh, I can't talk today. So, I'm going to use my toggle, and you know that one little seed bead that we had in from last week? Well, that's where we're going to attach it. So I'm going to be picking up three 11s, go through the one seed bead there on the toggle, and then three 11s. Take your needle and come back through those same two beads again. So you're going through beads four and three on the base. And pull, 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 pull. And now, that attaches your toggle. And you want to go ahead and reinforce that again at least one time. And it really helps if you can hit all the beads that you're supposed to. I know, I'm just feeling you guys with all sorts of great tidbits of information today. And then I'm going to go back through beads four and three again on the base. So essentially, I am back to where I was on my embellishments. Done. Okay. So, so far, I have an embellishment with a crystal, one without, one with. So now I'm going to do one without. So I'm going to pick up eight 11s. And I'm going to come back through beads three, which is the bead I'm coming out of and bead two. So three and two. And pull that. Now I'm going to do an embellishment with a crystal. So four 11s, a four millimeter, and four 11s. 
Now you can do three 11s on each side. You can do like three 11s of one color and another 11 of another color. Um, you know, you can really play. You can do this whole thing with just loops of seed beads if you wanted. A lot of people call this a caterpillar bracelet, and that's a really, to me, it just looks like shaggy carpet, but I love it. Okay, so now I'm back to eight 11s. Hmm, I think I put that one in there. It's a hot mess. And I'm going to go back through, since I'm coming out of bead number one, I'm going to go back through just through bead number one so that it finishes out the loop on that clasp. And so now there are six embellishments on the first row. Take your needle and come through the first bead of the next row. Pull that through. And now I ended this the the very end row I ended with a loop of seed beads so I'm going to start this one with a loop of the crystals so I've got four 11s a four millimeter and four 11s and I'm going to take the needle I'm going to go back through the first bead and the second bead so back through the bead you're coming out of and the next bead it's almost like if you were doing a step up in peyote you're doing the last bead and the step up at the same time is a good way that I could kind of explain it to you. So we did one embellishment. Now we're going to do one without the crystal. So I'm going to do eight seed beads. And the good thing about this is, I mean, you really can, like I said, do whatever you want to do. You could probably use fire polish beads for this, although it would be less sparkly. Um, you could do loops of all seed beads. You could change up your sizes of seed beads and use different sizes of seed beads. It's completely up to you and what you want to do. I'm just giving you a guide to go by. So now I'm to an embellishment with the crystal. And each time, except for those first bead, you know, you're going through and just adding your embellishments. So what you're going to do is you're going to work through the whole bracelet and every size 6 seed bead that you had on the base is going to have an embellishment so that when you get done it's going to be really really full like this one is. Okay, so you want it really full and you're going to go all the way to the other end adding your embellishments over each size 6 seed so bead. So after many hours your bracelet now has embellishments all along the top and the bottom is pretty well covered up. When you get to the very end of the bracelet you have two options. Option number one is that if your thread, your stitching thread is long enough you can use it to stitch in the tail. If not you'll need to tie this thread off and then put the tail or put the needle onto the stop bead and you'll actually pull the thread off of the stop bead. I went ahead, I had plenty of thread so I went ahead and tied off the um, stop bead thread and now I'm just going to still be using the stitching thread. I've done every embellishment and I need to go back because we have to be coming out of these middle two beads right here to add the clasp. So I'm going to stitch back through the previous row Being careful not to get that thread caught on anything. And then I'm going to stitch through the first four beads of the last row. On this end, where we added the circular part of our clasp, we only did three beads on each side. Because the toggle bar has to go into the toggle loop, you will want more seed beads. Normally, I say, um, I think on the pattern, the written pattern, I said to do four on each needle or, or on the needle. I think I'm going to do five on this one. And then I'm going to thread it through the Delica bead that we have on the toggle bar here. If I can get it. There we go. And then I'm going to do five more seed beads. And I'm going to come back through the third and the fourth 6-0 on the base once more. And when you pull it, be careful so that it doesn't get caught on any of your other little threads there. So now, 
you have the toggle part added and you want to go through and reinforce this little thing several times and then tie Once the you thread. have the toggle added, then this is the finished piece. So as you can see, it's really super sparkly. Um, this one is going to be, wow, that hurt my eyes there for a minute. This is going to be the brown, um, brown version that we have on the website. Then we'll have the turquoise and white opal. And then we have the emerald with the multicolored beads. Um, we will have all three kits on our website, um, which is off the beadedpathbeadstore.com. And we will have the step-by-step um, -step written pattern on the website also. Now, just a really quick FYI, um, in the kit, you will be able to make at least an 8-inch bracelet because... On the brown one, I laid out 160 crystals, and I ended up using about 130. So you should be able to get an 8-inch bracelet out of one of the kits. So I hope you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time for another video. Video. Bye-bye. <laughs>